Hey everybody, welcome back to another Stormworks video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a proper lower radar. The last video that I did was um, definitely not up to scratch. I did fiddle around with it for quite some time and figured out a decent amount of flaws in my previous design. For example, the fact that it was only finding targets as the radar crossed them, although it was temporarily useful, it was more of a placeholder. And today I'm going to be showing you my upgraded version. So here you can see it has, of course, the same thing as before. But what's different about it now is that, as you'll see once we come into range, which we should be in about at about 2.4 kilometers, it's going to start reading properly. As you can see on the outskirts, it's not very um, accurate until it gets into the circle. And as you can see, it's tracking something. What is it tracking, you may ask? If you look down right beside my waypoint, which I should probably clear, right there you can see I have a helicopter. And on this radar, Okay, it's gone too close to the center. That is what happens when it gets too close. Because it's too large. But it was tracking my helicopter. And it now appears to have lost it. But either way, um, I'm going to show you guys how exactly to build this radar from the ground up. So as you can see here, we've got a plain new workbench that I've just done. Uh, we grab a monitor, doesn't matter what size, I'm using 3x3 for this tutorial. We grab a battery. This also doesn't matter what size, but you know, I like to have it a decent size. Um, need a radar, which I will grab after the microcontroller I guess. So full on microcontroller. I'm just gonna call this radar for now. Width to length to actually I'm gonna call it radar tutorial. Just in case it meddles with my other radars. So we'll go logic. Logic we want to grab a number input for our rotation. We want to grab a composite input for our radar. I want to grab a, another number input for our range and uh, one more input of video or an output actually for our screen. So as you can see this is almost precisely what I had last time. However this time I'm just going to do a little placeholder that looks terrible. I'll be back in a second. There you go. Kind of got something like a radar circle with the dots around it. And the next thing we want to do is just spread these out. Range, radar, rotation. Range can go on the bottom because I know that I'm going to be using the same switch box method as I did before. The screen over here and then we'll just save this as radar tutorial. Doesn't matter what you guys save it as, just as long as it's recognizable and you can find it. So as you can see here, I've got a dozen of these. But it should be in here, right there. Chuck this right on top of the battery. And then the next thing we will need is a constant on signal, both for our radar and for our screen. Because of course we don't really want to be mucking around with things like um, that while we're working with it. And we want to grab a keypad. And we'll find that in a second. There we go. Put that down there. So the next thing we want to do is we want to hook up our keypad to our range. We want to hook up our composite, which you know, we want to hook up our um, video to our screen. We also want to hook up our data, hook up our constant on signal, our power switch. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to grab a radar. I like to use this radar, very simple. Now, something I missed last time is that you have to have the 
rotational arrow as you can see on there facing to your right and this this arrow right here you want that facing to the back of the screen or if it's upside down which I'll show you you want to basically have it like this that so you want to have it inverted precisely from the top so that it is both the both of these arrows should be facing that way both of these arrows should be facing forwards next thing we want to really do is we want to set up this radar we want to have it at 0 0.010 is my personal preference this seems to detect most things but as you did see in my airplane it doesn't detect large things close so if you really want to detect large things close 0 0.25 issue with that is it's not going to detect anything very far away so 0 0.10 usually works for me if it drops off your radar right before it's you you know it's far too close for comfort um, next thing is going to be our constant on signal goes to the radar rotation goes out to the uh, microcontroller opposite from the radar into the microcontroller electric of course put that all into the battery another little loop there and that is most of the things you need for what we have going here however we don't really want that to be facing backwards because otherwise if we're standing in front of it and the helicopter's over here somewhere we're not going to be able to see it so if you didn't know how to do this this is a good tutorial on how to rotate your um, in-game things in the workbench just grab it like that rotate it around so now it is facing that way so that if it's detecting me it's detecting me over here and it's detecting the helicopter over there just for separation purposes really so now we have our microcontroller for our radar most of what we want to do is going to be fed into a composite read but it's going to be a number so that we can read a write sorry uh, a composite write number so what we're going to do with that is we're going to feed it into a little block because we need some way to script our whole screen here something to interpret it basically and set this to 2 because we need our rotation which is going to be multiplied by pi which what I didn't realize last time this is the main step that I skipped last time we've got to multiply it so we're going to x times pi times 2 so basically that there is making turning the 0 to 1 output of the rotation from the radar to radians so now that that's there we just um, we grab one of these uh, property number or this range so that you can set a default range and you can actually change it with a keypad as well so our range is at 2400 which means that it's going to be taking the, you know, the best of our radar's capabilities at 2400 meters so that should be good however we need some way to differentiate between these two which I did do last time it's going to be our off so then we grab threshold gate grab our range and we hook that into there so basically what this is saying is that if our range is between 0 and 1 because we don't want it to be 0 and an undefinable number then we swap it over to that otherwise it's going to be at our preset so then what we want to do is rather than feeding this straight into here which I would usually do I'm going to go ahead and grab a composite read feed that into there then we're going to grab a push to toggle or a toggle to push actually so a pulse and if you go off to on 
move this back about one whole block and we're going to get a composite right our composite right goes into there and as you can see here we'll go on ahead and push that through to there so basically what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that if there is a hit from the radar which reads it on channel 1 that it is a pulse rather than a constant because otherwise you could end up with um, some varied results the next thing you want to do is basically so we've got a pulse which comes from our composite which comes from our radar and then I don't think we need any of the things from our radar itself so we're not using the azimuth angle but we are we are using the distance so we'll feed that into there as well and we'll start this on channel 2 so that the distance is getting read from the radar so basically that there is all set up that's all the logic you guys are going to need grab our lower script I'm, I like to delete everything here, but for the sake of it, I'm going to get rid of all of the things inside of the functions and all of these other little reminders that the devs have left us. Let's take that, get rid of that, and we'll keep that, basically. So we've got our width, uh, our w equals screen dot get width h equals screen dog here height okay so our next thing is going to be to draw a circle this is going to be the exact same process that we used last time so basically we're going to go height divided by two height divided by two so we're going to go screen dot draw circle h divided by two h divided by 2 and we want our we want the uh, diameter of the circle the circumference or the radius one of those lovely numbers we want it to be height divided by 2 minus 1 so if you didn't watch my old tutorial the height divided by 2 minus 1 is basically for the sake of it's basically for the sake of keeping that edge of the circle just off the edge of the screen so we also do need to go screen dot set color and we're gonna make this green because you know green seems like the right color for a radar so we'll test this out just for the sake of making sure that everything's still hooked up and there you go we have a beautiful find circle and this radar is rotating and the small keypad doesn't do anything at the moment so yeah we'll go into here go back into our logic and the next thing we want to draw up is of course our line which rotates around now this line is going to be the exact same as the previous one except for one major kind of minor thing which I completely forgot about last time so basically what I want is before we draw the circle we want to draw a line a screen dot draw line x y is going to be height divided by 2 height divided by 2 so that's our first x and our first y actually it's going to be width divided by 2 height divided by 2 so width divided by 2 height divided by 2 and then we want it to be height divided by 2 plus I'm going to compact this a little bit 
8 divided by 2 minus 1. So basically what that does is makes the line the default of the line if there was nothing um, keeping it in check. The default of the line is to the edge of the circle or to the very top of the um, to the very top to the very top of the screen basically so if I just form this in you can see we have an error because I never closed it and I didn't complete the rest of it so the next thing is of course carry on with this and we're going to times this by a specific um, equation to make it so that we know exactly what um, area the radar is scanning at the moment which of course we did last time as you guys remember I'm now going to set up my on tick so basically what we're going to do is we're going to grab our target distance first which is of course input not get ball one no that's not it's not right is it it's going to be get number because our target distance is not an on off and then we want the next thing that we grab to be our rotation so rotation equals input dot get number two and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to percentage this which means to basically cut off anything apart from that small area it's, it's still confusing to me but it works like a charm so you don't need to worry about it it's going to be math dot i yeah, that's right hang on okay math.py times two so there we go but our rotation which is going to reset every time it hits math.py times two which happens to be the rotation radians in 360 degrees so the next thing you want to do is you want to grab your range range raw i'll call it again and we're going to go equals input dot get number three. All right. So that there is going to be our range raw, and then targets, which go on here to integrate that equals input dot get ball, which is our on off one. So this is going to grab that pulse that we just chucked into the logic over there. You understand the whole reason for that later. But for now, that should be enough to carry on with the rest of this. So the next thing we're going to do is, of course, the exact same as last time, math.cosine rotation. Now, the difference between this time and last time is we're going to minus this from math.pi um, I think it's divided by 2. So, yeah, divided by 2. And we close both of them. And that means that rather than the line starting to the left of the screen, which it normally does, and it screws up the whole thing because the radar is in the wrong orientation for that, it makes it so it starts at the top of the screen. So, the next thing is to basically start off with our height or in this case it doesn't really matter what the height or width is of this because we're just going to go height divided by 2 again and then we're going to add height divided by 2 minus 1 and then we're going to multiply that by math.sin rotation minus math dot pi uh, divided by 2 there you go so that there should basically allow for this line to follow around the rotation of the circle so now if we spawn this in we should be able to see that a line is rotating 
the exact same pace as the radar, and it is constantly going around perfectly. Okay, so now that we've got that done, the easy part. Now, this is where it begins to differ quite wildly from our previous attempt. So we're going to change the colour to red, because of course when things pop up, we want them to be very, very obvious. So, screen, we want screen.set colour So red, green, blue, zero, zero. Alright, so then we go if tar, which is our target, if uh, then go on ahead and we start with something called a table. So this table I'm going to call it rot v. So basically that's going to symbolize ro rotation variables. And we're going to put the, turn this into a table. So rot v equals um, whatever these are called, parentheses or something. So if tar then rot v, put these in some lovely square brackets, rotation equals our range, I believe. So target distance times range actually. Tar d times range. Okay. So that makes it so that every time we get a target to ping, it sets um, the variable with the key of rotation. So basically with the set rotation as target distance times range. Now something that we have to do, which is very very important, is we've got to, rather than just sending in the raw value of that, we've got to floor it, which means to basically set it to without decimals and then we're going to times this rotation by 25 for accuracy if you don't do this then it's probably not going to get rid of the old ones as the radar goes around so if you really want to paint your whole screen a red color that happens just be made out of small circles then go ahead and do that but for this I'm trying to make it so that you can see the screen when you're finished. So basically what you want to do for your else, which is basically if tar isn't, so if tar isn't, you want to go rotation v, so rotation vector, map dot floor, rotation times 25, bunch of different parentheses. We want to make that nil. So when we are doing that we are basically erasing red dots from off our screen. So basically what this is doing is it's using our table called rotation variables and it's adding the target distance times range to this set rotation. And then, if there is nothing at that set rotation, then it goes ahead and denies it anything, gets rid of it, gets rid of old, um, basically gets rid of old values that it doesn't need anymore. So now that we've got a table, how do we make this table useful to us? So that's what we're going to do next. So what we did last time was we just made it so that if tar, then we draw up a red circle, which has now been replaced by adding it to a table. So what we need to do now is we need to draw up that red circle. So what we're going to say is we're going to go for rotation variables, I believe. No? Okay. Or well, rotation fast is what I'm going to call this because what this is going to do is it's going to find all of our variables and draw them on the screen at once. So for rotation fast distance in pairs 
which basically means that it um, writes them up in pairs and keeps them in their pairs from this table called rotation variable. Then we want to do we go here if um, distance is more than zero then we're going to screen dot draw circle f so it's gonna this is basically doing what we did last time and we're going to draw the circles all over the screen and we go h divided by two um plus distance times math.cosine not that uh, math.cos and we're basically just going to do the exact same thing as we did last time except it's going to be rotation fast and then we're going to of course take away math dot by divided by two is that math dot pi divided by two is a quarter of a turn so it's changing it from all the way to the right to all the way to the top just to clarify that a little bit more so once you've got that in we want to go for our next one which is of course h divided by two plus distance times math.sign I do believe yes math.sign we're going to get rut if times 25 because we need that to be back to its original number times 25. No, actually, we, we need to divide it by 25 to get it back to its original number. So if we just go divide it by, and we don't actually need these brackets because it'll do it automatically due to um, the slash being pri uh, priority to the computer. So we go minus you know, math dot i divided by 2. And then we close it, and then we go to two. Really simple. And then, of course, we need to, of course, end, and end, and that's it. If we go out of this now, we should see that that line is now rotating round. And our range was never set, was it? Okay. Because I never converted range raw into our range, which would require basically going range equals h by y2 divided by range raw. And of course, we want to go ahead and we'll prioritize our height divided by 2, or we'll be divided by range rule. Okay, so that there should be a perfect radar now. I've done this all correctly. And as you can see, we have a dot, we have two dots now. One of them is me, and one of them is that lovely helicopter over there. So if we get up, and I'll skip through this, but if we move this helicopter elsewhere, you should be able to see that it then has moved the dot on the radar. See you then. So as you can now see, I am moving the helicopter. And I've moved it a decent distance, so I'll slow down. Put out of my seat and I'll clock over here. Even with this weird glitch which happens to be still in the game. 
as you can see, I'm it's seeing me, and it is seeing the helicopter. And it has moved a decent amount away. Of course, you can change your range to like 10 meters, which means that it's going to see me much more, um, much more sensitive when it comes to me being near it. So now, if I change it back to 400 you can then see it's now detecting me right close to it, taking the helicopter a decent amount away. If I were to move it even further away, it'd be over there on the screen. And yeah, that there is a updated version of my radar. Thanks you guys for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.